Hey guys, D Mike here for another episode of Pikmin 3 Deluxe. No opening scene fanfare, so we're just gonna get right into it. We've got a lot to do today, actually. More than yesterday. Pikmin time. These videos don't go up every day. Maybe someday they will. Who knows? It depends upon how this channel evolves. Especially if you guys are liking, commenting, and subscribing. That'd be pretty neat, wouldn't it? Anywho. This is when getting the triplicate amount of all of the Pikmin makes the most sense. I did that last time, but it wasn't, I don't know, it wasn't as impactful as I initially thought. So we're going to get roughly the same amount of all of them. We're going to have a little bit more yellows. So we're going to continue our quest to save Charlie instead of postponing that. Makes me think a little bit of Twilight Princess, of when I played that game a long... Not Twilight Princess, nope, just kidding, that was a long time ago. Breath of the Wild, when I played Breath of the Wild. And, you know, you're being tasked with finding Princess Zelda. And a lot of the time, I was like, and no. Actually, Zelda, you're gonna have to wait. So, sucks to be you, sorry about you and all this, like, crazy evil crap that's, you know, getting you down, but ain't got time for that. Anyway. We have these, whatever, fiery goose slugs trying to get in our business again. But they uh, are able to hang out in water, which I feel is kind of unfair, but I get it. You know, I get why they do that. So we're going to take them out. Okay. No. We're going to try to take them out. There's also fire spouts here, which are frustrating to say the least and if you're put if your pikmin touch those they will of course be set on uh, fire except your reds so be mindful of that i think that we should be able to use our reds to take them out no excuse you sir can we can we okay guess not in some pikmin games eh, you know off the top of my head i'm thinking of the of the second, there's only three, so I have no idea why my brain was like, oh, I wonder how many there are. Um, you are able to attack the spouts, and in doing so, you could knock them out. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and complete the circuit here, and become very soft and fluffy. So this is very nice now. You actually have the ability to walk on these. Which is very cool. So, I think the proper protocol here is to throw a captain up on there. We'll give, we'll give Brittany some reds because they're not really doing as much. But we actually have already gathered one of these before. We did last episode, in fact. So, we'll use the reds just to be safe as well. Because if you remember from like five seconds ago we got water we got fire spouts we also have a very peculiar looking gate but unfortunately we can't do anything with that just yet instead onward and outward so this area might look a little familiar we've got some destructible glass that are super cool Rock Pikmin can take out for us. Also one of our favorite things, a data file, because we love those so much. <laughs> Thank you, that that Rock Pikmin clears up the, uh, the remainder. I'm not going to have them try to proliferate today. We don't really need to do that. And then here's a little info about the skitter leaf whatever Magoo. So there's that. So our red Pikmin have done us a huge favor. Here's where those leaves are if you're curious. So this area might look, once again, like I said, familiar. This is in fact the area where Charlie crash landed. So for those of you with a keen eye, you may have picked that up. We have to deal with one of these guys again. For some reason, it's just very rewarding to take them out. If you could stop trying to follow me around. 
shoot me with your with your big old rocks. I actually think rock Pikmin are the ones that aren't affected by it, so I'm gonna try to move past. Not go in this big old puddle. And once it pops out, use the rock Pikmin to charge it. Bam! That is That is hitting a crit that is a critical hit point for great damage. So yeah, you can see, uh, this is actually the spot exactly where Charlie landed. That's his kind of mark in the snow. That's kind of funny. I say that as if Charlie is not in, like, very immense danger right now. Oh, it's so funny, you know. Silly Charlie always getting into catastrophes where he could be dead. Hee 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 hee. That's funny, right? You know? Sometimes you just gotta make light of tragedy, right? Is that how- is that how the world works? We do have some of our Pikmin that, um, that are still leaves. I can see them by ALF, so I feel like there might be a way to, like, properly sort them by leaves. I think that it is supposed to, like, if you hold them and then you... No? Okay, well, that's the new move, by the way. So if you hold the Pikmin and then you... Okay, I don't know. I have no idea. But anyway, that's the new move. That's the uh, the dive roll that we learned from our new flute. So it'll get you out of some some sticky situations. That's not something I would want to leave behind, if you know what I'm saying. So we've got pretty much all that we're going to need for what we're about to do. Things are about to get spooky. Charlie had ventured this way before. Earlier in the game, if you guys remember. So... Here are these guys again. I wonder what this could be all about. And there's some sort of a signal that's popping up. And these guys, once again, not fans of radiant energy. And they will explode as such, like I do whenever it's a nice summer day. And there's something, something spoopy going on in here. There is something spoopy. So... It looks like there's a shadow of something going on. But we've got lots of climbing sticks to build today. And we do have, there are grapes up there, but we're not going to go after those just yet. We're going to want to continue to expand the light in this area. That's kind of the theme of this. I don't know if I can attack this, this doodad or not, maybe. Okay, I can. So that, 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 it's a nectar spewing device that spews the goo. And then we can also take out these things. These things are kind of annoying. They're not really a threat, but I did, I believe, on a practice run a long time ago, I did lose a Pikmin. So I was pretty peeved about that. So I don't feel so bad, you know? Sometimes in life, you just gotta vent all your frustrations. So, there we go. This area is a little, uh... It's a little spooky. We'll say that. We have a circuit to complete here. I think I need to back up a little bit. I think it's thrown onto this cliff, maybe? Like, oh. If I would have the yellows chosen, that would help. There we go. So it's only ten. So have them complete this circuit here. And get a glimpse of this nasty bugger. Who's this guy, huh? Apparently he's not a fan of our uh, presence here and... Lighten up his home. Surprisingly, not Charlie. Weird. Close resemblance, I could see it, but not quite Brittany. <laughs> Some of the dialogue in this game is quite good. That is one of them. We like it. So, now that we have completed that circuit, we can walk across these fluffy pads here. I'm not entirely sure if those are supposed to be mushrooms or not, but sure. And get your first look at the Vehemoth Foss Bat, huh? He hates the light, if you couldn't already tell. He is not going to praise the sun. And we'll be spending some time in this room here. This is quite a large uh, arena of sorts. We're gonna want to light it up. 
We're going to want to keep moving, though. One of the core principles of this area that we're dealing with right now is that the Foss Bat hates. Hates, hates, hates. Light. No, I don't. There we go. So every time you light up the room, you can get a good whack at him. So that's kind of your goal, is to go around here and make sure that you've got a good pulse on where it is, being all spoopy and such, and use that to your advantage. It's going to try to follow you around. It's got a couple of different attacks. It's going to shake some weird dust on you. And then another move that it can do is going to use this inhale attack. So now he's over this way. This is great. We can complete this circuit. Switch to red Pikmin. We're going to use our... Thank you. I did not mean to do hints. We're going to use our red Pikmin to attack him again. He's got quite a good amount of HP. Looks like it's going to take three rounds here. This uh, dust will cause your Pikmin to get kind of confused. Dazed and confused, perhaps. We don't like that very much. When it gets low health, it's going to cause these weird little goo sacks to pop up and make its gross little babies pop out. Don't like that. That's just nasty. Y'all just nasty. Yeah, they're kind of gross. So we're going to go ahead and attack the... the areas where they pop out. They're not really dangerous, but it is kind of annoying, so... It doesn't hurt to take out the area where they pop out from. I want you to not... No, I want you to attack the sack. Attack their sack! We don't want to lose any Pikmin here, so whistle them right back if they start to get into a sticky situation. And we're going to try to complete that third circuit. There's a couple more of these nasty things here. Not a huge deal, but the final circuit that we're going to, want to, going to complete is over here, so... We're going to have to start getting over here and... Always whistle your Pikmin back. That's kind of the big thing, is like if you're getting into danger, if you're getting into a sticky situation, whistle them back. Dodge roll, you know? That's a pretty effective move. All right. And we got the final circuit right here, which we can complete. And we'll hopefully be able to take it out right here. Oh, we just missed it by one. Come back, Pikmins. Come back, my beautiful leafy friends. All right, so that wasn't quite enough. Looks like we're going to have to do one more. And in doing so, we're going to need to take out some more areas here. Open up some light. Bring some light on this situation. Yeah, you just got to be careful with the Foss back because it will try to scoop your Pikmin up. They turn into a nice little snack for it, and we don't want that. That's not cool. We also have to be mindful of time still passing while you're here, so... You know, you can't be too willy-nilly with what you're trying to do. We do have bridge parts, though, so we can use those to, to continue exploring. Kill these things. I love... But there's like certain enemies in this game that make you feel really powerful because of how quickly they uh, they wind up being taken down. You just throw one Pikmin and it's like, all right, well, I give up. It's like, yeah, you do. You bet you do. All right, so we're going to keep going. There's a goose sack right here. So many sacks of goo. All right, and we're going to keep chugging along. This is primarily where the... Uh, where the exploration today is going to happen, so bear with me. Unfortunately, we don't have a real good way to take on the Foss Bat in the current moment, just because we don't have another circuit completed yet, but we'll get there, I promise. Bear with me. Oh, you little jerk. 
All right, stuff's getting kind of hairy. We're getting, it's getting kind of hairy. Come on, dang it. Yeah, you just gotta keep moving. And rescue your yellows from up top. I think one of them got snacked on. That's not cool. We might not be able to finish this fight today. We're gonna try as best as we can. We got a little bit of time left. And it was going really well until I ran out of juice. So, yeah, these guys are just kind of a, a little bit of an annoyance. Not really a huge deal or anything, but I think we can send some yellows up this climbing pole. And I don't know if it's to complete the circuit or to get puzzle pieces. It looks like puzzle pieces. Yeah, they should be able to come down and provide us clearance to the location we're trying to get to. They should be, I think it's just two stacks of pieces, which is good. Yellows can handle all that. Looks like that's the sound of completing a bridge here. And I do believe this is, uh... Gonna be a pretty shocking development here in a moment. This boss bat's not gonna like this. He's gonna be real upset. Sorry, buddy. So we're gonna turn around real quick and see if we can get to it. Charge him. We only had a little bit of damage left, so I guess, you know, that was kind of anticlimactic, but yeah, that's the fourth and final spot where you can do damage, but uh, yeah. Whoops. Sorry, buddy. But uh, things are not over. Apparently, Charlie was inside the Fosbat. Who'd have thunk? These textures look a little weird, kind of jagged, but that's okay. We rescued Charlie. Heck and heck, everybody, we did it. <laughs> Makes you wonder exactly how Charlie survived inside the Fosbat for as long as he was in there. It's been at least a few days. You would have thought that he would have gotten all digested by its juices and goo. But thankfully we were able to rescue Charlie. It's like a Jonah and the Whale situation. And now that we catch up, Alf can fill Charlie in on exactly what's going on. So he goes from the realization of being inside a large creature to knowing that, for now, we're technically stranded. We won't be able to bring back all the delicious juice to Kopai. And somehow, the Fosbat ate a data file? I don't know if like the data files are like an actual corporeal thing or if it's, I don't know if it's like a, like an SD card, whatever it is. But anyway, we have a, another update from whoever this Captain Olimar guy is. I found a key today. It says something about a cosmic drive on it. I doubt it's worth much, but it'll be a nice souvenir for my son if I ever get back to Hokotate. So my search for treasure continues. I'll stop at nothing to find the ultimate prize. I just know there's gold on this planet somewhere. So a fun fact, in the second game, one of the treasures that you can find is a piece of, is a Sacagawea gold dollar, if you guys remember those, if you're from the United States. It was a dollar coin that had like a gold plating on it. And this Olimar fellow in that game just kind of dismisses it as nothing. But for some reason, now he's all about gold. You know, back then he's like, I couldn't care less. And now he's really about it. But he seems to be the one that has the cosmic drive key, and that's the means off the planet. So we need to find this Captain Olimar guy. So Charlie is expressing our own mortality. Letting us know that we gotta we gotta make some waves here. Anyway, we gotta kinda hurry up. We don't have a ton of time here. Actually, I don't want the I don't need the the reds to do that. Let's have the yellows do it. They were the ones that were the the heavy lifters in the party today. I how the reds carry this delicious looking lump. Now that we've got all the things lit up in here, we can move through very freely. Creating that bridge was that let us get onto that car battery and when everything's lit up, all of those little minions, they get sucked away too. So we'll find out what this fruit is. We're only gonna 
be acquiring one today. This one that is... Looks like it wouldn't even fit there. But unfortunately, the way back is blocked. So the Pikmins are having trouble with this big load. Do not fear, Pikmins. Because D-Mike is here to save the day. Well, don't go backwards. We'll push this large bag out of the way. A large sack has never stopped D-Mike, I know that. And yeah, this is not too far away from the entryway where we were, but things are still a little dangerous, so we're actually going to go up ahead here. We're going to take out this Joust Mite who's trying to eat our Pikmins. He ate a couple yellows like a jerk. There we go. It's dead. We'll have the yellows carry his corpse in revenge. Yeah, that's right. We have these water spider things still trying to shoot juice at us. It probably is water. That makes sense, wouldn't it? But yeah, there we go. Everything looks to be in order. That was actually... Accomplished in one day. Sometimes that'll that fight will take you a couple days if you're not exactly sure what you're doing. So you just gotta be mindful of that. Oops. I thought that would give us a hundred, but I think we're missing a couple Pikmins. Wherever they are. Let's use our cool radar thing to bring them all back. I don't actually entirely know where they are. They probably got stuck in that cave area somewhere, which is not this way. So in the time being that we have left, we're going to go hunt hunt them down. I try not to let any of the pick... There's one of them. There's the other one. Okay, it's a rock and a red. Hanging out. That's all a hundo. Excuse me, sir. And uh, yeah, that's a boss fight down. That's a new fruit collected. Two new fruit. Well, not new, but it's one of the newer fruits so yeah and we rescued charlie so how about we uh end the day i wish this screen wasn't quite so ugly like the end of the day screen would be a little bit more aesthetically pleasing but it's just got a whole bunch of junk on it but yeah it's another part of the distant tundra opened up and now that we have charlie we can plan things a little bit better it might just be my memory, but like, for some reason, I know this is on Switch, which is like, you know, allegedly a more powerful, better looking console, but I remember this looking better on the Wii U. I could be wrong, but who knows? It's always like the idea when you're a little kid and like you play PlayStation or Nintendo 64 games and it was like cutting edge 3D at the time and then you go back and play it and it does not, does not age well. But anyway, we got two larger fruits. So the citrus lump again, the tangerine. There are many delicious tangerine flavored foods out there, which I'm sure you've all enjoyed. Orange flavored things are very yummy. And we have the heroine's tear. This, my friends, is a mango. So fun fact, uh, the skin of a mango has similar properties of poison sumac. So be careful when you're out there harvesting mangoes in the wild, it could cause you to have an allergic reaction on your skin. But a mango, being a larger fruit like that, is gonna give us two and a half jars of juice, which is awesome. So we've made a lot of progress. And once again, Brittany's a little depressed, but you know, our quest of finding juice is still there. We still have the big buffer. If it takes like three of them to have, you know, one vial of juice per day, like it makes me think like how much juice would they need to bring back to Kopai for everybody there. Like, are there, you know, how many people are on Kopai? Enough that you would probably need hundreds of vials of juice. So maybe this is just supposed to be like reflective of that. So unfortunately we had five of our yellows die today, but we got some more back. We actually have more yellows than anything now because of the Fosbat. So that's pretty good. That was a lot of progress today. Let's see who the journal entry is from. Looks to be Alf. All right, day eight from Alf, here we go. Thanks to the yellow Pikmin, we were able to defeat the behemoth Fosbat. 
And much to everyone's surprise, we found our captain inside the beast! Wow! And can you believe our luck? He found a data file from someone named Olimar, who has our cosmic drive key. But where in the world is this Olimar? Where? We need that key. Signed, Elf. So a lot of progress, a boss fight, two fruit accomplished. We found Charlie. And you can fight the behemoth boss bat and defeat boss mission. Yeah. So this is fine. Like they're adding this as like part of like additional content for the game, but I feel like it really takes me out of it when it feels like you did all these things and now here's all this meta game stuff. Whatever, it's fine. Hope you guys enjoyed yourself. Made a lot of good progress today. If you're not liking, commenting, and subscribing, please do so and continue to enjoy yourselves. Hopefully you had a good time today. I've been D Mike. This has been Pikmin 3 Deluxe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.